Hey everyone, this is Mr. Swing Trader. Um, in this video, I'm going to be explaining what this channel will be about and what you can expect from any future uploads. The general gist of the channel will be around investing, personal finance, and stock analysis. I just wanted to start this series to document my investment journey by sharing a combination of investment strategies such as undervalued growth and also leveraged investing. When I started investing, uh, it was extremely difficult to find sp out specifically what other people were investing in, especially since I live in Australia. It was difficult to just invest money in the US markets alone because it was extremely expensive. Uh, a lot of the channels that I've found out there on YouTube are based in the US mainly focused on dividend investing and, or index investing. So I really wanted to provide Australian investors with a glimpse of an Australian investment portfolio, especially for those that are just starting out or want to get a feel of what investing is like. I didn't have the luxury of seeing this when I started out a couple of years ago, so I wanted to create some content for beginners that want to learn more about investing uh, and also personal finance as well. So in this video, I'm going to go through the holdings that I currently have. Uh, I want to provide a portfolio update every two weeks or a month just because there's not much movement within a week. So without further ado, I'm going to quickly give an update on my portfolio and briefly explain each holding. Uh, so right now I'm using a portfolio tracker tool called ShareSight. Uh, I have my Australian and US holdings on separate brokerage accounts so it becomes a bit of a pain to keep track. Um, the reason I like this platform is because it consolidates multiple brokerage accounts uh, just on one platform. Uh, it's free if you have under 10 holdings, but uh, once you start having more than 10 holdings, they start to charge you a monthly subscription fee. Currently, my portfolio is valued at $64,929.42. Uh, you can see that in this calendar year, I'm up about 12.14% compared to the S&P 500, which has returned around 0.4%. Uh, keep in mind this is uh, all in Aussie dollars, so the benchmark would include any currency movements between the AUD and USD. Uh, I've already closed out a few positions this year, so I'll just be showing my current positions today. The first holding that I have is Digger Data. So Digger Data is an Australian owned software and hardware distributor. The company distributes a range of products of uh, various technology vendors uh, including Cisco, Citrix and Dell Technologies, um, HP, Lenovo, Microsoft, Toshiba, Samsung and other brands. Uh, in this video I won't be explaining the growth in a whole uh, lot of depth just to keep the video short and sweet. The second holding I have is Fang. Especially uh, exactly how it sounds, it's an ETF that's domiciled in Australia that holds the US FANG stocks. So that's Facebook, Twitter, Nvidia, Apple, Alibaba, Alphabet, Tesla, Netflix, Amazon and Baidu, which is basically the Chinese search engine. Again, this ETF is more of a growth play. Uh, most of the tech stocks have returned to fair value after the March and April dip, so I don't see any uh, point in adding to it. Uh, the third holding is MFF. This is the Magellan flagship fund, which is operated by Chris uh, McKay or Mackay, aka the Australian Warren Buffett. Uh, their biggest holding is MasterCard, Visa, and Home Depot. Uh, during the pandemic, the fund has converted a lot of this current stock holdings into cash. Uh, it currently holds 50% in cash, so which isn't ideal. Uh, so I'll keep an eye out on this and see whether if I should sell this holding or pick up something else. But in the meantime, I'll leave it as it is. The next holding is Macquarie Group. So Macquarie is an Australian multinational independent investment bank and financial services company. I uh, picked up some shares around $100. Uh, before the coronavirus, M Macquarie was sitting around $150. So I saw a lot of uh, upside potential here in terms of value and also a possibility of returning to $150. The next one, Sensor Group. 
I picked up some shares around $2.07, uh, $2.27 and $2.50. Sensor uh, Group's uh, shopping center company with retail destinations operating under Westfield brand in Australia and New Zealand. Again, I saw a lot of upside in terms of uh, value, the possibility of returning to around $4, especially with the Australian and New Zealand government lifting restrictions. Uh, so the next couple holdings is Tech and VGS. So Tech tracks the Morningstar Develops Markets uh, Technology Moat Focus Index. So if you're interested in adding tech exposure to your portfolio, do uh, go and have a look at the fact sheet on the website, which I'll link below. Uh, VGS is the Vanguard MISCI in Index International Shares ETF, which seeks to track the return of the MISCI world, excluding Australia. Uh, now, now you'll probably realize that I hold a few mutual funds and ETFs. Uh, when I started investing, I didn't know what I was doing, so I resorted to index investing, uh, also known as passive investing, buying into the idea of achieving 9 to 10% per year. But I realized this strategy uh, would take quite a while and strongly believe that if I just spent some time doing some research and selecting my stocks, uh, given that I invest wisely, it's possible to beat the index. So moving on, Facebook uh, doesn't need much of an explanation here. Social media monopoly that owns Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp. Uh, Facebook does have a tremendous balance sheet and growth prospects, so I'll continue to hold on to Facebook. Uh, the next is Realty Income, which is a real estate investment trust. Uh, some of the tenants include Walgreens, 7-Eleven, Dollar General, FedEx and LA Fitness. Uh, with COVID-19, the share price has declined significantly with great upside. So I decided to pick up some shares last week uh, as a value play. So we'll see how this one pans out. Uh, the next one we have is Revolve. Uh, Revolve is an online fashion retailer. Their marketing strategy is a bit different from other online retailers. Uh, they utilize social influencers on Instagram to promote their brand. Uh, now, do I think uh, online retailers will replace malls? I'm not too sure. But nowadays, uh, sales online are definitely increasing faster than sales in stores. Now, the final two holdings go together for a leverage strategy. Uh, I started to experiment with a strategy that consists of 50% TMF and 50% UPRO, uh, rebalanced quarterly. I did do some research that included backdated data to show that this strategy has outperformed the S&P 500 significantly over the long term. So if you guys are interested, I'll make a video that goes into depth about this strategy. And now that concludes the portfolio update for this week. So I'll provide everyone an update within two weeks or so. Uh, thanks for watching guys. If you guys found this video helpful and want to see more, please let me know by dropping a thumbs up and subscribing. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.